What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and killing at least one of your goals today. Today we are reviewing the 2023 Subaru Crosstrek Sport. Huge thank you to Tyler Wright over at Stallman Subaru of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Crosstrek Sport or any Subaru product, I'll be sure to have Tyler's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, let's jump right into the video and talk about the exterior and performance. And like I said, this is a 2023 Subaru Crosstrek Sport, and this particular one has been painted in ice silver metallic. One thing I wanted to say uh, just right at the beginning of the video is that it is a little bit blustery outside here today. So I do apologize if there is any wind noise in the video. I do have a wind sock on the camera. However, it still might get a little bit of wind noise. So I apologize in advance for that, but let's get back into the exterior. So. With the Crosstrek Sport, you do get halogen headlights as well as halogen turn signals and halogen fog lights towards the bottom of the front bumper. The Sport does get a specific gunmetal gray grille with a satin black surround, as well as you do get your Subaru emblem at the center of that grille. The Crosstrek Sport gets 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which brings us into our next point, which is that you do get some satin black cladding at the bottom of the front bumper which leads into your wheel arch molding so again with the sport you do get some more satin black wheel arch moldings as well as a four wheel independent suspension you also get sport specific wheels so these are 17 inch dark gray metallic wheels wrapped in 225 60 yokohama geolander g91 all season tires give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires there real quick then you can see your independent front suspension in there as well. I like how the wheel arch moldings match the cladding that is found at the bottom of your passenger doors, but we'll get to that here in a second because you do get gunmetal gray mirror caps with integrated turn signals. These mirrors are heated as well as they are auto dimming with the $681 exterior and interior auto dimming mirror package. You also get blind spot monitoring with the $1,600 option package 22. And you will find the blind spot monitoring on the inside of both side view mirrors. So it'd be like right there for your passenger side side view mirror. I'll do a little side profile of the Crosstrek Sport. There you go. And then working away from the top down, you get black raised roof rails as well as black window trim, body color door handles with keyless access. I was actually surprised to see that the Crosstrek Sport had keyless access. And obviously I was pleasantly surprised because I walked up to it put my hand behind here and the vehicle unlocked. You can also run your finger across these two hash marks right here and that will lock the vehicle. And again, you get some satin black cladding at the bottom of all your passenger doors. Those are your rear satin black wheel arch moldings. And one thing that I thought was pretty cool and I like how Subaru paid attention to detail with this is that at the top of the business end, you do get a gunmetal gray shark fin antenna. So I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but that is painted in gunmetal gray. And then you get a painted black roof spoiler with third brake light integrated nicely into it. So this is painted black. It's not like a satin black. And then you get a single speed rear wiper back here. There are two different modes to it. So it'll go slow and then it'll go like this. But it's the same speed if that makes sense. So then get your Subaru emblem. Just below your Subaru emblem is where you'll find your reverse camera. That's what your rear taillights look like. And then again, you get some gun metal gray badging back here. So your Subaru badging is gun metal gray. Your symmetrical all wheel drive badging is gun metal gray and your cross track badging is gun metal gray. Now where they switch it up a little bit is on your sport lettering. So you do get a gun metal gray outline with green lettering. So it looks pretty cool. And uh, you do get a manual opening tailgate. So all you gotta do is find the Subaru emblem, come underneath it, you'll find a pad pull up on the tailgate. I know it's so hard in uh, today's day and age to lift up the tailgate yourself. Oh, so difficult. But here is what the rear looks like. So you do get an all weather floor mat for your trunk, as well as you got a light on this side. So I can turn it on, I can turn it off just like that. And uh, really good amount of storage space back here. You also get a cargo cover. So thieves cannot see the contents of which you have in your trunk when your trunk is closed and you have this thing pulled out. So that's pretty cool. And then if you don't want it open, you can obviously retract it and it'll go back in just like that. And you get a little storage cubby over here, another one on the driver's side of it. And then if you lift this up, let's see what we have under here. So you do have your spare tire as well as your tow hook, your jack, 
everything you need to replace the tire if god forbid you end up getting a flat tire now this particular cross track sport does have the 152 dollar rear bumper cover in satin black so it's right here and that is a 152 dollar option one thing i like is that you get a little grab handle here to close your trunk throw it shut very very easy to close and then on both sides of your rear bumper respectively you have reflectors with a satin black surround around them so you can see it okay, has a little view of that a view of that and then you get a body color rear valence at the bottom with like four fins and then if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity of the 2023 cross trek sport it is 1500 pounds but there is one more thing i wanted to show you guys and that is that you do have your filler neck on the passenger side of the vehicle you do have to open it up from the interior so i'll show you guys that when we move into the interior but i'm curious to hear what you guys think of the 2023 cross trek sport let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below this one is faster than the base and the premium because you do get a bigger engine with the sport so that leads me into my next point. Let's move into performance. Popping open the hood reveals the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder that makes 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. It is made into a linear Tronic continuously variable transmission with an eight speed manual mode for a zero to 60 time in seven and a half seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 34 miles per gallon on the highway for 29 miles per gallon combined with symmetrical all wheel drive. I think those fuel economy numbers are absolutely phenomenal, especially considering that this is a four door compact SUV with all-wheel drive and it actually has quite a bit of get up and go to it surprisingly and like I said with the sport you get the 2.5 whereas with the base and the premium you get the 2 liter but if you guys are enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys's help so if you guys would take a second give the video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but let's move into the interior all right guys moving into the interior like i said you do get keyless access just make sure you have your key fob in your pocket when you walk up to the vehicle and put your hand behind the door handle the vehicle will unlock you can tell that the vehicle unlocks because you get a double beep but you can also lock the vehicle from the driver's side door handle by running your finger across these two hash marks and that will lock the vehicle and you can tell that the vehicle locks because you get a single beep so let's move into the interior you get the double beep which means the vehicle unlocks so with the cross track sport you do get the startex water repellent upholstery so if you guys want to carry your dogs with you you can throw them directly on the seat then wipe the seat off uh, right after they get out if they're all wet and dirty and stuff like that and you don't have to worry about them leaving a residue because uh, like i said you could just wipe it right off so at the top of the door panel you get like this faux leather type of material then you get some of that StarTex material here on your armrest with some accent colored stitching. You get some perforated StarTex material like right here. You get your door handle. You get some faux carbon fiber trim, power mirror controls, unlock and lock buttons. You get automatic up and down windows in the front, but you get manual up and down windows in the rear. Pressing on this button will lock your passenger window privileges. Now, one thing that I personally really like about Subaru products is that you get this little handle thing right here to close your door, but it's also a great spot that you can set your phone. So other manufacturers, this spot is about like this big and Subaru makes it big enough for an iPhone 14 Pro Max to fit in there, no problem. So thank you Subaru for making a great spot to set your phone on the door panel. And then you get a great spot. You can set a smart water bottle as well as some more miscellaneous storage. And then taking a look at the interior, again, you get the StarTex water repellent upholstery with cross track sewed into the seat backs of the driver and the passenger front seats. And that's like that greenish yellow type of color. It looks pretty sweet here in person. You get some gray, then you get some dark gray. You get a manual driver seat, a manual passenger seat. This is the spot where I said to open up your fuel tank let's move into the interior and uh like i said you do get keyless access so that does mean you have push button start so just make sure you put your foot down on the brake make sure the key fob is in the interior and push to start and that is the startup on the two and a half liter four cylinder so let's start over here then we'll work our way to the passenger side and then move into those rear seats so this is to turn traction control on or off this is to turn your automatic stop start on or off and then this is to turn your blind spot system on or off it also has rear cross traffic alert as well so that will turn both the rear cross traffic alert off and 
your blind spot monitoring off. And then you have this scroll knob right here. So this is to brighten and or dim your backlit gauges as well as your backlit buttons. So I think it was uh, on the max brightness. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. And then you can see right here, you have a trip reset button. So if I press and hold on that trip reset button, you can see you get 19.7 and then you get a 19. So this is like your trip B information. You get a trip A and a trip B, this is trip B. So we're gonna reset trip B by uh, pressing on that button right there, press and hold on it and that number will go back down to zero as you can see. But let's take a look at our turn signal. So this is your turn signal and headlight control stock. So right now the headlights are in automatic. So you have off, automatic, daytime running lights on, and headlights always on. If you guys wanna turn your fog lights on, you gotta make sure that your headlights are in the always on position. So fog lights are on. Once I put it back in automatic, you can see the fog lights turn off. Once I turn the headlights back on, you can see that the fog lights turn back on. So make sure if you guys wanna turn your fog lights on that the headlights are on. So let's take a listen to our turn signal. That's what the turn signal sounds like on the 2023 Crosstrek Sport. And then you got your windshield wiper control stock on the right hand side of the steering wheel. And then this is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel with your control being right here. Get your media controls on the left hand side of the steering wheel. If you see this info button right here, if I press on that info button, this info button controls what information you see on this top screen in your center stack. So press this, you can go in between your different uh, fuel range, trip B, uh, trip B average speed and all that kind of stuff. Then you also have your ambient exterior temperature and the current time. That is not the current time, that is inaccurate. So media controls on this side, you get your volume up and down. This is to pick up on a phone call and or to speak to the vehicle. When I mean speak to the vehicle, you can press and hold on that and be like, hey, Subaru, can you please turn the AC to 60 degrees and it'll do that for you. And then this is to hang up on a phone call and then you got these controls down here to control your productivity screen. So let's go throughout that productivity screen. So click on that, get your tire pre PSI. This is to let you know when the auto stop start comes to a stop and turns the vehicle off. It lets you know how long it's been off for and how much fuel it has saved. Um, we'll go down one more. That's your digital speedometer readout. That's like some uh, different analytical stuff, like how far you've driven, like time-wise and distance-wise. That's your fuel range. And then that's trip A, trip B. You can press and hold on this and then you can go uh, into a different menu. So you can go into screen settings, default settings, vehicle settings, eyesight settings. So let's go into eyesight settings. Uh, lead, you can turn all this stuff on or off. Um, so yeah, that's really about it for that. Uh, press and hold back on this and it'll bring you back into your other screen. So this is probably the screen that I would have it on, the digital speedometer readout. So with the Crosstrek Sport, you can see a little circular outline down in there with that greenish yellow type of color. Um, so that is what you get. You get like sport specific gauges. All you really get is that outline. Um, and then this is your RPM gauge. That's your speedometer. That lets you know that you're in park. That lets us know auto stop start is on or off fuel gauge you can see you have that gas pump and it's pointing to the right hand side of the vehicle that lets you know that you fill the vehicle up on the right hand side this vehicle has 19 miles on it so that's the odometer and then up top here this lets you know like right now we're not getting great fuel economy but when you start like coasting um, this will come over to this side and it'll be green and that lets you know that you're getting better fuel economy if it's on this side you're not getting good fuel economy so that's about it for that gauge cluster let's take a listen to our horn that's what the horn sounds like on the Crosstrek Sport. You get like a leather wrapped steering wheel with some more of that greenish yellow accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel. And then you get that greenish yellow accent colored trim piece underneath your horn. And then on this side of your steering wheel, you have your cruise control settings. And then you also have your like sport mode and just your regular mode. So those are your sport mode, regular mode, sport mode, regular mode. And then again, when I said you have a continuously variable transmission, with the eight speed manual mode, you got your paddle shifter. So this is your downshift paddle. And then on the right hand side, you have your upshift paddle. That's about it for this section over here. I guess there is one more thing I can show you guys that doesn't really matter, but if you pull down on this, you can find uh, a fuse box just behind that. 
And then again, up top here, you get your info screen that you can control with this button. And then this particular Crosstrek Sport has the optional $1,600 option package 22, which includes this eight inch Starlink infotainment with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. What's also included in that package is the power moonroof, as well as the blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. So I think that is uh, a worthwhile option to get because you get this bigger screen. If you don't get this option, you get a six and a half inch screen. So just keep that in mind. If you guys want the bigger screen, uh, you gotta get option package 22. And to go throughout this screen, we'll go to the home button. So this is your home screen. You can see what is there on your home screen. Go over one, you get a blank page and another blank page that you can add widgets to if you wanted to. Uh, click the home button, brings you back into your home screen. That lets me know that my phone is connected and that's how much battery my phone has as well as uh, how much connection my phone has. Bar wise, you get to CD player, home button. This is to bring you into your AM, FM, XM. This is your phone stuff. And then media is like your Bluetooth audio, your auxiliary jack and your USB. This is to go back on a track. This is to go forward on a track or uh, change radio stations on your AM, FM or XM stations. Volume knob, then you get your tuning knob. Um, yeah, that's about it for the infotainment screen. And then down here, you get your hazard button your hazard sound like and then you have your climate control stack so this is a single zone climate control vehicle and that is what your climate control stack looks like just below that you have your media stuff so you got your auxiliary jack as well as two usb a ports and a 12 volt outlet you also have a great spot so if you're like charging your phone via either the usb ports or the 12 volt outlet you get a great spot you can set your phone down in there if you wanted to then right here this is obviously your gear shift lever. I like how notchy it is. You can see it like it bounces in between each gear. Like you can feel it engage each gear, which I like. And then if you guys wanna go into your manual mode, put it into drive and then push the gear shifter over to the left. And now you're in manual mode and it lets you your, know you're in manual mode by that red little light. Throw it back into drive, now you're back into drive. Uh, one thing I like is that you do get a manual emergency brake pull up on that it works like a regular old uh, emergency brake which i personally like then you get heated front seats with two levels of adjustability one is high and one is low and then you get your x mode button to the left of those uh, controls for your heated seats so if i click on that you can go into your snow slash dirt mode or your deep snow slash mud mode click it one more time and that puts you back into normal driving mode so x mode button just to the left of your heated seat buttons then you got two cup holders you get a center fold down armrest that kind of goes like a uh, interesting shape uh, but that's better for the driver so if you know uh, you're trying to have your arm and drive with one arm i like how you get that little extension little nub uh, makes it very comfortable to drive with one right arm so popping this thing open down into here you get two more usb a ports as well as another 12 volt power outlet you get a spot down here that you can set credit cards business cards um something like that maybe a small pen and then good amount of storage space down in there i'd say maybe 40 percent of my forearm fits down in there so you can set what you need to down in there um good amount of storage space again here are what your seats look like one thing that i really like about subaru products is their headrests so you can see the driver's seat does the exact same thing as what i'm going to show you guys here but if you guys are tired of holding your neck up yourself you can push this thing forward and it will hold your head up for you uh, on a long road trip which is very nice or if you know you're just driving to the bank and you don't feel like holding up your neck yourself uh, push this thing forward and you can put it all the way back let's see how many settings there are there's one two three four uh, yeah, so four settings total and that's the uh, least intrusive setting and then that's your most intrusive setting and then you got you know three in between those two and then taking a look at our dash you get like a faux leather wrapped dash with some more of that accent colored stitching to match your trim here and obviously this accent colored stitching as well. Um, then you get a gunmetal gray trim piece just uh, above your glove box. You do get a lockable glove box with a good amount of storage space. You can fit your owner's manual, napkins, straws, whatever you need to set in there, it will fit. And then the passenger door panel looks pretty much the exact same as the driver's side door panel. This particular Crosstrek Sport does have the $681 exterior and interior auto dimming mirrors with Homelink. So this is an auto dimming mirror. And then both of your exterior side view mirrors 
are auto dimming. And then obviously, like I mentioned, you do get home link, which is your universal garage door opener. So if you're going home and you have three different garage bays at your house, you can open up each garage bay individually, which is very, very nice. So that's what your auto dimming rear view mirror looks like. And then on the upper right hand side of your auto dimming rear view mirror, you have your compass. So right now we're facing in an easterly direction. This lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. This is your lane keep assist on or off. This is your pre-collision braking on or off. And then this is your power move moonroof control. So you can either tilt the moonroof or you can slide it like a normal moonroof would go. Then you get your driver and your passenger light. Folding this down, you get your vanity mirror with one vanity light. And one thing that I like about this Subaru product is yet yeah, this does not slide however you have a slider right here so pretty cool so if the Sun is like coming from here and then the visor you can see is kind of small you get this little thing that slides out and will block the Sun uh, from bothering you which is nice and then the passengers does the exact same thing passenger gets an Opu handle the driver gets an Opu handle we'll open up the sunroof for you guys to take a look at it that's what your sunroof looks like looks like any other sunroof to be honest with you guys but I do want to go over key features and those key features include Subaru EyeSight. So this does have Subaru EyeSight. And that includes pre-collision braking, pre-collision throttle management, lane keep assist, and lane departure warning with sway warning, and lead vehicle start alert. So if there's a vehicle in front of you and you're sitting at a stoplight and you're on your phone and the vehicle in front of you has moved, it will go like beep and it'll... Uh, project something here on the screen that says vehicle ahead has moved. I'll show you guys that on the driving portion of the review, but that is my favorite feature of the um, EyeSight system. I think that's really cool. So if you're not paying attention, you're not gonna hold the people up behind you because your car is gonna let you know that the vehicle ahead of you has moved. So I really like that. Some other key features that I wanna highlight is that this does get heated front seats, the blind spot monitoring, obviously that's an option, as well as the sunroof and keyless access. The sunroof is also an option. Keyless access is standard with the Sport, which I think is really nice. Now, bear with me here for a second while I pull up the window sticker. All right, I'm gonna throw some safety stuff on screen right now and just read over a couple of them. This does have symmetrical all-wheel drive. It's got the ice driver assist system you get all those different airbags you get whiplash protection front seats rear vision camera I'll show you guys the rear view camera clarity so it's actually pretty dang clear and you do get some guidance lines so that's pretty nice um, and then you know you guys can read over the rest of those safety features I'll throw some comfort convenience and interior features um, you guys can pause your screen again this has the 8 inch screen that comes with option package 22 so disregard where it says 6.5 inch Starlink multimedia system because this one has the upgraded infotainment screen um, now let's go over some government safety ratings so the overall vehicle score for this is five stars frontal for the driver and the front passenger is four stars each and then the side crash for the front and rear seats is five stars and then for rollover it's a four star safety rating so pretty good this is a pretty dang safe vehicle you guys asked me i'm gonna throw the rest of the window sticker on screen now so you guys can take a look at all the options that this has what comes standard and fuel economy stuff if you want to pause your screen take a look and uh, let's go over the msrp so the msrp of the way that this particular 2023 cross track sport is spec is $31,653. Let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section down below. I think that's a pretty dang good price for a vehicle nowadays. I mean, one thing I like about Subarus is that they, I think they're very fairly priced. They're actually pretty nice uh, to drive, in my opinion. I think they're really nice to sit in. Um, I think the interior has really good quality uh, considering the, you know, the $31,000 price point of this vehicle because nowadays, Vehicles prices, vehicle prices have gotten so out of hand and it's nice to see that there's still affordable vehicles on the market like this Crosstrek here and that they're still pretty dang nice. So I do want to show you guys what's going on in those rear seats before we move into the driving portion of the review. So let's take a look back here and uh, let's see what's going on. So one thing I like is that these seats do fold down and you just pull up on this thing right here and the seat will drop. But let's take a look at our door panel. So pretty much exactly like the front you get some perforated StarTex upholstery you get a nicely padded armrest accent colored stitching you get a manual down and up rear window some faux carbon fiber trim and some miscellaneous storage at the bottom of the door panel taking a look here are what your rear seats look like same kind of combination that you'd find at the front with the light gray with the dark gray accents um, with some more accent colored stitching 
Um, so let's step in and let's see what we got going on here in the cross track. So there's no connectivity back here. So just keep that in mind, but you do have that connectivity here in your glove box. So it's not too far of a reach uh, in order to plug in a USB-A port or you know a 12 volt outlet to charge your phone. Driver seat does not get a seat back pocket. Passenger seat does get a seat back pocket. You do not get a center fold down armrest. You get an Opu handle, and this passenger also gets an Opu handle with a great spot you can set your dry cleaning. You get another great spot you can set your dry cleaning there as well. And then you also get a interior dome light for your second row passengers as well. But really that's about it. Um, I did have this seat further back than I normally would. So uh, this seat would go up a little bit more for normal driving. But even then, I still have a good amount of knee room. I still have a good amount of leg room. And you can see I still have a decent amount of headroom as well. I'd probably say, you know, if you're 6'3", I don't know how comfortable you'd be here in these rear seats, but for somebody who's like 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 uh, I think you would have no problem sitting in these rear seats. But, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review where we always start our videos in this spot and we go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and rate them on a scale of one to 10. Did pretty well over the first one. Now let's see how she does over the second one. Again, we're going five miles an hour. Let's get down to five. It's about five right there. Ooh, I gotta give this thing a 7.9 on a scale of one to 10. It went over those bumps very, very well. And uh, the suspension on this thing is pretty well. Let's see how it does body roll wise. Very, okay, there is a little bit of body roll. There is a little bit of body roll. Um, however, every vehicle, unless it's like, you know, like a Porsche 911 GT3 uh, or something like that, every vehicle that's a daily driver like this SUV here, for the most part, has body roll and this doesn't have like an extraordinary amount of body roll which is a good thing and normally when you get a little bit of body roll it means you have a better ride over you know just going smooth like this here so definitely nothing to complain about like i think this suspension is very good again you get a four wheel independent front suspension or independent suspension excuse me um so let's go about 45 because that's a speed limit um and let's see how this thing drives so you can see right now you know we're just cruising going about 47 miles an hour and you can see now we're in the green that means we're getting better fuel economy and when i read the fuel economy numbers for this cross track here this has the bigger engine and we're still getting 27 miles per gallon in the city and 34 miles per gallon on the highway my mom actually just picked up a new well not a new it's new to her 2020 mazda miata rf grand touring and that thing gets i believe it's 26 miles per gallon in the city and 35 miles per gallon on the highway so really this thing is not doing that much worse than a mazda miata with a two liter four cylinder is and the miata is like this big and this thing's like just a little bit bigger than that so considering that this thing is all-wheel drive you can fit five people in it and it's still getting you know what's that 27 miles per gallon in the city that is very good fuel economy so very you know impressive considering that it actually has still a good amount of get up and go and you know um i got in this vehicle you know not really knowing what engine it had initially um and i the last cross track that i drove was the uh 2023 cross track base and that had the two liter four cylinder and i got in this and i'm like okay well this thing feels like you know it's got quite a bit more get up and go than the base did and i was like well is it the gearing is it the engine and uh it is the engine so this has the two and a half liter four cylinder whereas the regular base and the premium have the two liter four cylinder so another thing is i wanted to go over the final drive ratio so the final drive ratio from what i've read online for the sport is 390 rear gear so my 2010 camaro ss is a six-speed manual and that has 373 rear gear so i think my buddy's wrx sti it's a 2015 has 390s or 391 so you're getting the same gear ratio as a wrx sti so that's pretty cool you know and uh, that leads definitely to better get up and go uh, around town and stuff like that now on the highway i'm curious to hear or see where this thing cruises at you know at like 70 miles an hour rpm wise 
Um, we can, you know, check it out how it cruises at about like 50, 60 miles an hour, but uh, we don't really have the roads to go much faster than that. So, I mean, even here at 50 miles an hour, you know, we're about at like, you know, maybe 1200 RPM. So still, you know, pretty low RPM for cruising around at 50 miles an hour. And the ride on this thing is really, really good. Actually, it soaks up bumps very, very well. And, you know, with that ground clearance, I think this has like 8.7 inches of ground clearance. You could do some mild off-roading. So this is kind of like an overlander vehicle. I know this isn't like, you know, the off-road variant, um, like, like the uh, Outback Wilderness. You know, that thing's actually built for overlanding. But this thing can still do some, you know, mild off-roading. I mean, you're not going to take this thing in a mud pit, but you know, I've seen people, you know, buy a Crosstrek base or buy a Crosstrek Sport and then they lift it and they throw some big beefy knobby tires on it and they actually perform pretty well off-road and they look pretty sweet as well with those big huge tires on it. Tires that don't look like they should go uh, on a vehicle like this, but people still throw them and they look pretty dang sweet. So I've seen, you know, vehicles like this on Instagram and stuff that they do like a zombie theme. Uh, where it's like, you know, like a Walking Dead type of, uh, you know, build where they go, uh, would they raise it up, put beefy tires on it, and it looks pretty sweet. And, you know, if you're going to do something like that, I would suggest getting uh, at least the Sport because with the Sport, again, you get the bigger engine. Where the as the base, the premium get the 2 liter, the Sport and up get the 2.5 liter. And I think the 2.5 liter is definitely worth it. Um, however, you know, if you're looking to buy a Crosstrek and you're not looking to spend more than like $27,000, the Crosstrek base is still a great car. Yes, you get a 6.5 inch infotainment screen, whereas on this one you can option for the 8 inch screen. Um, but still, you know, for the base or for the base, it's actually pretty well equipped. You still get eyesight and stuff like that. Uh, still get a great ride and still get the same amount of insulation here um, on the base as you do here on the Sport. But I think personally, if it were up to me and, you know, I was getting a car like this, I would want to get at least the Sport due to the upgraded power plant. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I like to have, you know, disposable power is what I like to call it. Power that you don't quite need, uh, but it's always nice to have for that one in five times that you do need it. It's, it's always for me, in my opinion, it's always worth it to get the upgraded power plant. Again, that's just my personal opinion. Some of you guys don't care. You just want to go from point A to point B. You want good fuel economy. You want something that's going to get you to A and B. And, you know, you just want something, you know, that's comfortable and gets good fuel economy and that's where the base comes in if you guys want something that's comfortable still gets great fuel economy and has quite a bit more power i mean it's only like 30 horsepower more uh, but it equates to a more fun and a better driving experience in my opinion so um, as soon as this light turns green i'm going to do a little mild acceleration here to the left and i'm going to test out the paddle shifter response so as soon as this light turns green we'll get up and go again one thing i wanted to say quickly is that i was sitting at a stoplight back there and there's a guy next to me he was looking at me he's like what the heck because i got the camera on my head it's kind of something that people don't normally see but like i said when you're stopped it counts how long you've been stopped for and you can see it says vehicle ahead has moved. So that's two things I wanted to show you guys. So we got a double whammy, two and one. But let's do a little mild acceleration here with the paddle shifters. I'm going to shift. So, you know, not quite the best paddle shifter response, but they're there if you need it, if you want it, if you want to have a little bit of fun. Um, let's see if the paddle shifter response is any better when you throw it into sport mode. Okay, this it does seem to be a little bit better if it's in sport mode, but I'm not going to test it through this school zone here. Uh, I will test it before we end out today's video, uh, comparing you know normal mode to sport mode. But like I said, this is a great vehicle for those of you guys who want a little bit more power than what you get with the base model, and for those of you guys who don't want to spend more than like thirty-five thousand dollars on a vehicle or thirty thousand dollars really on a vehicle. Um, this is a great option because it's very comfortable to drive. It's a smaller vehicle, so it's easy to park. Um, it cruises well at, you know, highway speeds, goes over bumps very well. Um, you get, still get Subaru eyesight. You get a universal garage door opener. You get an auto dimming rear view as well as side view mirrors. Um, so this is a very nice vehicle. And again, I'm happy that there are still affordable vehicles on the market that are nice and nicely equipped because again you know today today's day and age 2023 vehicles have prices that really have gotten out of hand it's kind of ridiculous that um 
you know, a base model Chevy Tahoe costs $60,000. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I like how there's still a vehicle like this that's affordable and it's comfortable and you can haul your family around. Still get, you know, not quite all the features, but you get a happy medium of features uh, in affordability. That's the way that I would look at it. Features for affordability, features for the price. Um, but I do wanna show you guys the difference with this thing being in sport mode and the manual mode. So right now we're in sport. I'm gonna go into like third, maybe second, and then I'll give it a little. So again, not the quickest response, but it does seem to respond quicker, at least the paddles, um, when you are in sport mode. So if you guys do wanna drive around and paddle shift, uh, I suggest putting it in sport mode for just slightly quicker paddle shifter response. But like I said, guys, if I had to summarize this vehicle, very nice, very comfortable, very uh, good amount of tech for the price so it's affordable technology all right since we're the first people in line i do want to show you guys what the acceleration is like just in normal mode and normal drive mode um just accelerating up to the speed limit so here it is Pretty good acceleration. All right, guys, and now on to our zero to 60 test. All we gotta do is line up and we'll gun it in three, two, one, floored. And that's 60 right there. Zero to 60 in 8.6 seconds. That BMW saw us accelerating, wanted to accelerate too. Man, that's so funny. Pretty quick zero to 60 acceleration. You know, obviously this thing is not built for speed, um, but still pretty quick acceleration. I thought it was pretty funny that that BMW started accelerating too. And uh, that's what the car community is all about. Having fun with each other and stuff like that. But pretty impressive zero to 60 time. I know it's not the quickest in the world, but it's a heck of a lot quicker than the two liter. So pretty good zero to 60 acceleration. You know, like I said, this thing is not built for zero to sixties or quarter mile times. This thing is built from, you know, getting you from point A to point B safely, efficiently, um, you know, and relatively quickly. I know, like I said, it's not the fastest thing in the world, um, but it's got enough get up and go to, you know, get you up and going um, as you need to, you know what I'm saying? So I know it's not, again, the fastest, but it's got more than enough get up and go for a daily driver. And I am definitely happy with the power that we have here today. You know, that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So if you guys would help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers, take a second out of your day, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, but I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.